And then Pilate looks at him after he talks about the truth. I've come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate, most likely smart elically, said to him, what is truth? So Jesus acknowledges his royal mission. He declared that he had not come to subjugate the world, but to bear witness to the truth. And he said, I came here to make plain the truth of God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so Pilate's question was the response of somebody who had given up hope on finding the truth. Because he was living in a world of skepticism. And if this is true then, it is true now. We hear this more than ever. No, 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 that's your truth. I hear it even from Christians in the church about the Bible. Well, that's just your truth. Your truth, my truth, our truth. Well, then to use Arkansan language, then that ain't the truth. Francis Schaeffer used to call it true truth. There's a difference between truth and true truth. The kind of truth that gives form and function to all other truths. Now that'll preach. But what kind of truth are you talking about? Well, you got, I got my truth and you've got your truth. And I always get a kick out of this when I'm talking to people of different religions, especially because some religions believe in reincarnation. Some religions believe that they're trying to escape into a nirvana like state of consciousness, if you will. And so what people will say is all religions are the same. Basically, we're all just trying to get to heaven to which I would say that is incredibly insulting to the Hindu and the Buddhist because they don't actually believe that. They don't actually believe there's a heaven. They believe in reincarnation and they believe in trying to escape this body and this life to get to a Nirvana-like state. So to use Pascal, who was a great theologian and a great philosopher, an incredible mathematician, if X is X and Y is Y, X can't be Y. It's that simple. But everybody wants to come off as if they're so inclusive. There is not an inclusive person on the planet. Every person is exclusive. It just depends on what you believe. It just depends on what you believe. Like the person who says that they are so open-minded, open-minded to all of these things. You know, like right now we're in another sexual revolution, right? We're in another, this is like the 60s on steroids. I heard the 70s were pretty bad. I, I, I came at the late end of that. We're in a new sexual revolution and everybody likes to talk like that. Well, that's true for you and this is true for them and this is true for them and this is true for them and this is true for me. I don't care what your holy scripture book says, but let me tell you this way. The world is made up of three-fourths Muslim Jew and Christian. Three fourths of the world make our combine are those three groups. Those three groups historically in their holy books do not agree with the sexual revolution going on right now. So when someone says, hey, I'm just trying to be open-minded about sexuality. I'm just giving you an example. I'm just trying to be open-minded about sexuality. So what you're telling me is you hate three-fourths of the world. Because three-fourths of the world disagrees with your view of sexuality. See, people aren't critically thinking anymore. They don't even know that in their so-called open-mindedness, they're the most exclusive, narrow-minded bigots themselves. But that's why truth is so important because true truth gives form and function to all other truths. So when Jesus shows up, it's no wonder they crucified him because he's telling them they're wrong. 
He's saying, I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You're not getting to the Father through your religiosity as a Jew. You're only going to get there through me. And so everybody's like, nail him. Send him out there. Let's go. And so here's the deal, Christian. Maybe I'm a little amped up today because it's Father's Day. I don't know. There will be no room to be neutral. You can't be neutral. You can't say, well, that's good for them, and that's good for them, and that's good for them. Because what happens is you're going to get shot in the middle anyway. You're going to get shot from the right. If you're doing what's right, you're going to get shot from the left if you're doing what's right. Because you're following the word of God, which we believe is the truth and profitable for every good work. Now, that sounds really harsh until you look at the cross of Christ. The truth got him killed for you and for me so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. I remember a preacher saying, listen, why don't you just, even if you don't believe Christianity, why don't you try Christianity? Just try to follow the Bible and see if your life is better off. And one guy actually tried it. He tried to follow the Bible without believing in Jesus. And he said, you know what? My life actually got better. Somehow, some way. And I'm like, well, go figure. It, can you believe that? More peace, better health, better life, just following the Bible. Unbelievable. That's just unbelievable, isn't it? And I think the guy actually ended up surrendering to the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the way it works. But what is truth? Your truth, my truth. Uh, take, take that out of your vocabulary. When your kids and your grandkids start talking that talk, challenge them critically. Start challenging them critically and saying, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, you know, my truth. Well, let's talk about that. Let's walk through it together and let's see if yours holds up or if this scripture holds up here. Francis Schaeffer talked about true truth because Jesus Christ in John 14, 6 is the true truth.